Hi guys, this is your lecture today on chapter two. Um, in your classwork here, you are gonna need to open up chapter two. We are doing chapter two, lesson two. Um, you will also need to open up your book to chapter two. Um, while this loads, let's talk about um, We've been learning about the Archaic and the Paleo people. They were some of the first prehistoric people who lived here. Um, so as time goes on and they become more advanced with their tools and their ways of living, um, they've created these civilizations that are thriving and just growing and growing because they're making more food. So more food equals more people. So now we're going to talk um, today, we're on page 54 in your online book, we're going to talk about the Pueblo farmers. Um, so our key ideas for today are the Mogollon people were the earliest full-time farmers. Um, they did a little bit of hunting, they did a little bit of gathering, but mostly they did farming. Um, other ancient civilizations developed around the world during the same time. Um, the ancestral Pueblo built the first large cities in New Mexico, and Chaco Canyon was the largest and most well-known early Puebloan community. Um, so here are some of your words, centralized government, equiva, matriarchal, monotheism, and polytheism in Pueblo. So this is a picture um, of the Mogollon, and they're, they were a cliff-dwelling tribe. I've shown you guys some pictures of some of the cliff dwellings because um, they're protected from the top. You know, people can't just drop in and say, hey guys, we're here to attack you. And the only way into these um, dwellings was this way right here. And so the enemies would try to come up from the bottom and attack them. Well, if you watch Star Wars like Miss Cantwell does, you know that you have to have the high ground. Um, high ground, you have better position, you can see everything, um, and so you have the upper hand. So, like the Paleo people before them, um, the Archaic people that we learned about last week, eventually they disappeared. So in their place, um, in the Southwest, there were some more prehistoric cultures that start forming. These cultures were the Hohokam. Oh, that's not good. The Hohokam, <laughs> guys. Okay, let's try it this way. The Hohokam, the Mogollon, and the ancestral um, Pueblo people. So all three groups created agriculture communities um, and they were larger and they were more successful than the earlier groups because like I told you, more food equals more people. Um, they are best known though for their housing, their basketry, the way they made baskets, and their pottery. So um, the, because the Hohokam people lived in what is now Arizona, we're just going to focus mostly on the Mogollon and the ancestral people. So while you're sitting here watch this, watching this, I want you guys to say this word, mogollon. In the Spanish language, two L's together make a Y sound. So think about tortilla or the county of Bernalillo. So this is the mogollon people, okay? Um, they're named this because uh, they were in the Mogollon Mountains in southwestern New Mexico, and this is where archaeologists found um, the first pieces of Mogollon pottery. They were believed to be the first um, full-time farmers, and the earliest full-time farmers. Um, they grew corn, squash, several varieties of beans, and they also grew tobacco and cotton. So they um, they grew food in small gardens, and they also watered um, and planted crops on the mesa. Um, we have a lot of mesa around here. That's the terrain. That's basically um, a lot of New Mexico. They depended on the mountain rains to water their gardens and crops. 
So because they lived in the mountains and the valleys, um, they weren't able to build those irrigation canals from the rivers to water their crops, like the Paleo and the Archaic people. Um, so they collected rainwater from um, storms and from the mountains and small dams, and then they carried the water to their crops, which seems like a lot of work to Miss Cantwell. Um, but if you'll recall, one of your vocabulary words was tributaries. So when the snow melts in the mountains and the water comes down, it forms these small little streams, these little tributaries that feed into bigger uh, rivers or streams. And so they would redirect that water um, to go into their fields. So um, although farming provided most of their food, they still did a little bit of hunting and gathering. They hunted turkey, deer, rabbits. They were believed to be the first groups to develop the bow and arrow um, for hunting, <coughs> excuse me, instead of the atlatl that we um, read about and watched videos on last week. So they also collected seeds, berries, nuts, and plants. And because mountain fruits ripened at different times of the year, the mogollon always had fresh fruit. And I don't know about you guys' parents, but Miss Cantwell's parents always were like, you should eat a piece of fruit. Oh, I kind of have a scratchy throat. Eat a piece of fruit. Always my mom telling me to eat some fruit. So maybe my mom is mogollon at heart, right? Um, so let's talk about their village life. Most Mogollon villages were made up of pit houses. So, um, oh, I didn't include a picture. The pit house picture was from lesson one. So if you want to see what a pit house looks like again, go to your chapter two, lesson one notes. I put pictures of a pit house in there. Um, they were built on the side of a mountain um, that received the most rain. So because they were built into the ground, they provided natural protection from extreme heat and cold. So these guys are getting um, a lot more advanced at their places where they live based on the Paleo and the Archaic people. Um, so the structures were built around a separate pit structure called a kiva, which was used for ceremonies. Um, so here is a picture of the Mogollon home in the side of a mountain. So as you can see, it's impossible for any kind of enemy to drop down from the top. I mean, unless you have some kind of crazy mountain climbing equipment, but they didn't have that then. Um, so the only way to come in was from this front side here, and then by then they know you're there. Um, but let's talk about the kiva. So in your notes, you have a picture of a kiva. Um, it was used for ceremonies. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. Um, it was used for ceremonies, and it doesn't look like much, um, but you can see there's two wooden sticks coming out, and that is the ladder. Um, so they would cover this top part. Um, you can see these pieces sticking out, and this is what holds the roof up. So when you climb into this kiva, this is what it looks like. Um, they were usually always round, um, and they were used for places of gathering and for religious ceremonies. Okay, so this is a kiva. And if you go to any ruins um, in New Mexico, any places where um, prehistoric people lived or people uh, for different times in New Mexico, you can usually see remnants and remains of kivas everywhere. So they were large round rooms lined with stones, and in the center of the kiva floor was a tiny hole called a sipapu. Um, ancestral Puebloans believed the sipapu was the passageway from the underworld. So they think the very first humans came into the world through the Sipa poop through this passageway. Um, they also believed that after someone died, their kachina, or spirit, could live on by going back to Mother Earth through the Sipa poop. So this is part of their 
culture, you guys. This is part of their beliefs. This is part of their culture. Um, I want you guys to be thinking about your beliefs and your culture because you have an assignment on it soon. Um, one of my students last year, uh, her grandma would not take them back to the reservation because she said the Kachinas were angry and um, she didn't want to put them in danger. So I guess there is a Kachina, my understanding is there is a Kachina for every, um, every part of life, for crops, for rain, for sun, like there's, there's a spirit for every single aspect of their lives. And if you anger them, you know, then the result could be bad. This is their culture. This is who they are as a people. And these beliefs and ideas have carried on since these Mogollon, Paleo, and Archaic people. So these ideas have been passed down for centuries and like many, many years, okay? That's their culture. So although the main purpose of the Kivas was religious, they were also used some time as a gathering place for the men of the village. Sorry, ladies but women rarely entered the kivas. Um, it's important for you guys to remember that during this time, um, women didn't have many upper, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, upper, higher rights than the men did. So the men were the leaders. They were the religious leaders. They were the medicine men. They cared for the village. The women um, kind of, did the important busy work to keep everything going, um, but they weren't allowed in religious practices. And this will change, and I, we will learn about it, um, but for the Mogollon, the women rarely participated um, in the religious ceremonies, okay? So, um, here's a question for you. Why do you think the Mogollon hunted with bows and arrows instead of atlatls? Do you have any idea? Do you think? Do you know? Do you know? Um, well, we'll learn about it. Stand by. So from Pit House to Pueblo. As time passed, Mogollon housing changed. The people started to build their homes with stone, brick, and clay. So if you will recall, they built their homes on the side of the mountain. So they needed something super sturdy because if snow, rain, or water, is, you know, barreling down the mountain. They need something super sturdy. So they also built multi-room apartment houses that were sometimes three stories high. And some of these houses had 40 to 50 rooms encircling a plaza. Um, this type of housing is called a Pueblo. Vocab word. It was the term used by Spanish explorers to describe the native villages that they encountered. Um, so this is a word made up by the Spanish, not by the natives themselves. So although the Mogollon built Pueblos, archaeologists believe the ancestral Pueblo people were the first to create the Pueblo style. They think the Mogollon learned to build Pueblos and Kivas from the ancestral Pueblo people. So part of culture um, and civilizations and We'll also learn this when I have you in U.S. history next year. Um, there's five components to a civilization. Um, they have a form of government and religion. They are centers of trade. They have a written language. Um, they have um, specialized tools and they have, no, they have advanced tools and they have specialized jobs for each person. So what's happening here is the Mogollon took an idea, part of their culture, from the ancestral Pueblo, and they made it their own. Um, so let me see here. So in your notes, um, we are going to talk, well, we've been talking about the Mogollon. So they were named for the Mogollon Mountains in southwestern New Mexico. They were believed to be the full, first full-time farmers. They grew food in small gardens, depended on mountain rainwater to water their crops, and they still depended on hunting and gathering, but not so much because they were really mastering the farming aspect. 
Um, so they lived in pit houses, and their houses were built around a kiva. And here's your picture for kiva. Um, the main purpose of a kiva was religious. They were used for a gathering place for men, and women rarely <coughs> entered the kivas. So eventually, they started building their homes from stone, brick, and clay. Um, there were multi-room apartment houses that had 40 to 50 rooms in them, and it was called a Pueblo. Let me pause this, and I'm going to go find a picture of that for you, and then I'll, um, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Okay, I found some here for you. <clears throat> so this is a huge um, community that was created. If you look closely, you can see a bunch of little tiny circles. Those circles are their kivas, and this is where they lived. So, as you can see, if you were an enemy and you're just trying to find this group of people to attack, unless your name is Spider-Man, there is no way that you are going to be able to drop down and attack and have it be effective. Um, so this is how they stayed safe from weather, from enemies, and many, many, many different families lived here, and they all worked together to um, create this community and this way of life. Here's a closer view. As you can see, um, it's pretty high up there. Um, when You can visit these places down south, and when I took my children, they, they wondered what if there were little children or little babies who got near the edge. And my guess is they learned very quickly not to go near the edge because um, it would certainly not end up well. But they um, have stairs, and you can always up here on top see the black from the fires that they had. I think you can see it. So if you see these black stripes here on the rocks, the remnants from their smoke and fires that they had still exist today. So, let's keep going here. So, the fate of the Mogollon, um, as with the prehistoric people before them, no one knows exactly what happened to them. Some think they moved to a different area. Some think that they joined forces with the ancestral Puebloans who lived up in the Four Corners area. Um, still others believed that they stopped living together as a group and just spread out. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is their pottery. Um, they're best known for their pottery they left behind. Their pottery was made from clay rolled into thin strips and then coiled into different shapes. Um, and then they would smooth out the sides and the underside. And after baking in the oven, the pots were decorated with pictures from everyday scenes. Some show men hunting and farming and some show people dancing. Um, so this tells us a lot about their culture. Like their housing, Mogollon pottery changed throughout the years. Their most famous pottery is the white with the black decorations. I always thought it looked like a pencil drawing. Um, it was made by a group that lived along the Mimbres River in what is now southern New Mexico. Um, so this is an example of a Mogollon bowl, and I also included some uh, here. They're, to me, they just look like pencil drawings, um, but they used nature and natural resources to do the coloring and the artwork, and I just think it's pretty phenomenal. So we are going to stop here today. Um, if you would like to um, please create a copy of these notes for your own <clears throat> Google Drive, or you can hand copy them if you would like to do it that way, okay? We're going to stop right there, and we'll just talk about the Mogollon today. <laughs>